Welcome to Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Profiting in today's real estate market takes more careful navigation than it had previously. Education and techniques on how to do it and where to do it today on Get Rich Education. Finally, with Total Control Financial, get checkbook control of your existing 401k and IRA funds to invest in real estate. Yes, you can move your retirement money into your own checking account, but you must avoid the little known tax that you'll get hammered with in a self-directed IRA. Instead, start your QRP. Learn more and get your free copy of the QRP book by text messaging QRP in all capital letters to 72000. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Welcome to Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you, Anytime I see a media article about ending shelter-in-place orders, I've got to read it. I want to see timetables so that I can better envision this post-pandemic world and get back to normal, whatever that even means anymore. You know what's interesting? Something that I never thought that I would see in my life, and you probably didn't either, is a recession by choice. When you think about it, that's really what we're in here in this era that I like to call not the Great Depression, not the Great Recession, but we are in the Great Shutdown. Yeah, it's a recession by choice because we've chosen to put ourselves in recession for the betterment of everyone's physical health. You know what else is interesting? When things are good and the economy keeps expanding like it had for 11 consecutive years, well, when things are good like that, you just cannot imagine them being bad. And when things are bad and uncertain like they are now, it also does not seem like they'll be good again either. When times are good, it seems like they'll never be bad again. And when times are bad, it seems like they'll never be good again. Well, of course, they're always going to ebb and flow like that. Times of economic prosperity last way longer than recessions. That's one positive thing that I can say. And it's what psychologists call the recency bias. We are more likely to remember what happened recently and then just project that forward as to what will happen next. It is overemphasizing more recent data. Now, when it comes to where to place your money today, I was watching a TED Talk video with Ray Dalio earlier this month, and he had some interesting things to say about cash. You've probably heard of Ray Dalio, the widely followed billionaire hedge fund manager and investor. He said, do not think cash is a safe investment. In uncertain times, a lot of people think things like, I just want safety And bonds don't produce yields these days, so where do I get a safe return? Maybe it's with cash. Dalio called cash a seductive investment. It's seductive because it has less volatility. But he went on to remind people that cash effectively taxes you and your buying power at 2% a year. If you really want to believe that the real rate of inflation is as low as 2% a year, He said that cash is almost always the worst investment. It's the worst because it just lazily trends towards zero as inflation debases it, inevitably debases it. You want real assets, maybe even a little bit of gold. Don't try to time the market, any market. And finally, Dalio said, we will retreat from globalization, which is so interesting. And that's the end of what Dalio said. But the reason that's interesting is because between that and the economists that we've talked to here on the show, there is this growing consensus that this move away from globalization and toward nationalization means that there is then less trading between nations. Less trading means less competition. That means higher prices. That means inflation. Yes, inflation being that stealthy thief for savers and real estate investors winning that inflation triple crown. 
Well, as for existing tenants that you have in your properties now, how many paid you the rent on time this month anyway? For me and my properties, I usually have about 90% of my tenants that pay the rent on time. And at the beginning of this month, it was closer to 80% of the rents that were paid on time rather than the usual 90. And of course, that was before anyone received the government relief checks, those $1,200 checks that are part of the $2 trillion CARES Act. That's helping out. And thank goodness that we focus on residential real estate here. People need a place to live and they're going to keep needing a place to live. I would shudder to think about what commercial real estate operators have for percent monthly rent collections. Those figures, 80%, 90% of on-time rent payments, we've got a decent sample size there with my own properties. How many properties do I personally own anyway? Well, I don't own hundreds of doors, but I do own dozens of doors, or I guess scores of doors, if you will, and they span across a number of U.S. states. And some people say that they own hundreds or thousands of doors, but they really only own a fraction of each door if they're invested in those through a partnership or a syndication. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just letting you know that that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about doors that I own completely. Now, there are a few interesting things about making money in today's real estate market. With existing tenants, you've basically got whatever you've already got as a tenant mix. They are yours and you hope that they have incomes and can keep paying the rent since there's an eviction moratorium in most places. But instead, with new income property purchases that you make, before that tenant is ever placed in your property, well, now you're starting with a fresh slate and you can see that they have a job deemed essential or see that that tenant has a durable income stream one way or the other before they're placed in your new property. Another thing that you want to pay particular attention to in this market is something that's always important, but even more so now, and that's that you want to pick up on positive migration trends so that you have more tenant employers to draw from in those places where there is that job and population growth. One smaller trend that we've discussed is, for example, the migration trend away from high-cost, high-tax Chicago and Illinois' fiscal problems, and those people moving just across the state line into northwest Indiana, where the cost of housing and property taxes are substantially lower, but yet those people can still have a reasonable commute to Chicago from there. A larger trend is one of America's largest migration trends there is, and it's so predictable because it's been happening for decades, and this is people moving to Florida, especially from New York to Florida. We've had Harry Dent here on the show a few times, and he talks about how your demography is your destiny. Follow the demographics. Follow where the people are going. And that way, as I say, you can make money follow you. Even though some states have larger total populations, Florida still leads the nation in total net in migration, both domestically, that is people moving from a different part of the U.S. to Florida, And Florida also leads internationally as people move from other parts of the world, especially Latin America, to Florida. Now, when you think about how to house all those people moving into Florida, well, Florida has a housing shortage much like we do nationally. In fact, the Orlando MSA year over year shows that there are 16% fewer listings and properties spend six fewer days on the market. They're being snatched up more quickly. There's one particular property provider there in greater Orlando, which is central Florida, that is selling an average of more than one house per day, all from just this one super provider. I'm going to talk to them about what kind of changes they've seen in their business. When housing demand exceeds housing supply, they've got to keep building just to try to stay close to that demand. And for over 21 years, They've only dealt with investors selling properties to investors like you that are then rented to someone else. To help orient you here, when we think about the geography of Central Florida, we think of the Space Coast where all the rocket launches take place, 
That's Florida's east coast, and that includes places like Palm Bay and Melbourne, Florida. Orlando is in the center of the state, and Deltona, Ocala, and the age 55 plus community called the Villages are part of central Florida. And then going further west between Orlando and Tampa, we have places like Lakeland, which is part of Polk County. This one super provider and their two property managers serve this wide geography. And, oh, I just love it when I get to use my underutilized geography degree on the show like that. Let's meet two guests that work together today. I'd like to welcome two guests onto the show today. They work together and they both provide brand new construction Florida investor homes, three different types, single family homes, duplexes, and townhomes, all new construction. First, she's been a realtor since 1979. Yes, more than 40 years. That is probably a get rich education record. That is some awesome seasoning. And she consistently ranks as one of Central Florida's top 15 realtors. And she works with more than 1,000 investors, most of whom have never even seen their investments or visited Florida. Welcome, Jean Gillen. Thank you so much, Keith. And then he's a real estate developer with over 18 years in the business with more than 400 turnkey properties successfully delivered. Welcome to Get Rich Education, Wagner in Alaska. Thank you, Keith, for having us. Really appreciate the opportunity. How old are you now, Wagner? 41? And 41. I'm, and I've been in the business for 41 years. So that's kind of a funny <laughs> thing, right? So he was born in 1979, the year I started. And I have to tell you, there's nothing boring about real estate. And real estate investment is such an amazing opportunity for each one of us. I say that all the time. I think that it's the only way we can hedge our bets. Let's face it. We're going to pay $7 for a Starbucks in a few years <laughs> with it, what's going to happen. So these houses are going to be worth a lot more. That's right. And they're printing dollars like nuts. Well, Gene and Wagner, since you're experienced builders and realtors, and you've seen a number of market cycles, I want to ask you about pandemic effects on your business in just a minute. It's funny. Sometimes I get sort of tired thinking about the pandemic, but you've got to. And increasingly, I like reading media articles about when we might get back to normal, whatever that even means anymore. We're talking to you in Florida because last year, Florida had more net in migration than any other state in the entire nation. In fact, more than 10,000 people move to just your particular region, Central Florida, every week. So things are better here than elsewhere. You do serve a wide swath of big geography there in Central Florida. Tell us more about that geography you serve. Well, they're coming from all over. So it's not that they're coming from only New York although the governor of New York will audit you if you say you're moving to Florida. He wants to know that you're here more than half of the year. The reason why people are coming to Florida, and we laugh because we always say from New York to Florida, you, you just kind of jump all over all those southern states. And now you're really in, in this, one of the most southern states in the United States, which isn't really a southern state. It's but it's not really the south, yeah. Yeah. We have one of the highest per capita in, in the area of Naples, Florida, and we have well, Winter Park. We have a lot of high-end areas, but we have a lot of jobs. We've had one of the best job markets probably in the United States for many, many years. We've always had one of the lowest unemployment rates. We know that even in 2007, 2008, 2009, the worst, worst time, we still had 60 million people visiting us during that time. Last year, we had about 76 million people visit us. So we're cheap and cheerful. We're a good vacation. But more than that, we are the second in manufacturing in the United States. We are the first in Space Coast, which you all know, because Space Coast, which Wagner will explain to you a little bit more, has over 400 new employers. And these areas, these people are employed at larger sums, like over $100,000, which for Florida is pretty cool. We also have an Amazon distribution center, probably on every other area on I-4. They're just building them and they are huge. So there's a lot going on in Florida, but why do they come here? They come here for jobs. They come here because we have no state income tax. Yeah. What does that mean? And that means a lot. It means a lot to everybody because if you come from New York, that could be 11%. You don't have to pay. We have no municipal tax. Everything is in one tax. 
So that's what we have. When you buy something here, it's a six and a half percent tax, not nine and a half or ten percent like California. So it's what I call cheap and cheerful. Which house is still about two hundred fifty thousand, four bedrooms, two baths. People ask me, do you think that the prices are going to go down? I do not. Right. If demand continues to exceed supply, that's substantially different than the last downturn we had about 12 years ago, where supply outstripped demand. And that's what caused a lot of the problems. But when we talk about geography, Wagner, we're talking about the Space Coast and then all the way through Central Florida to the West. Tell us more about that geography that you serve. Central Florida incorporates pretty much from coast to coast, from the east all the way to the west, from Daytona Beach, Palm Bay, all the way up to St. Petersburg and Tampa. So talking a little bit about the Space Coast, it's one of my favorite areas. We haven't discovered anything that it's new. We pretty much follow a lot of good leaders. And those leaders, if you really know them, are Elon Musk, which is on the SpaceX. Jeff Bezos, which is the owner of Amazon, is actually investing really heavily on the Space Coast. Yeah. And Sir Richard Branson, he's doing a train line that is going to connect Central Florida to the port, right in Port Canaveral, all the way down to Miami, which is going to be a fast train passing in Palm Bay. So the space uh, coast overall is huge. We have a lot of defense companies, on the other hand. We have Lockheed Martin, L3 and Harris that have recently, last year in August, they have actually signed a joint venture in which they're now uh, creating 30,000 jobs nationally on the engineering level, and they're going to be producing close to $17 billion in revenue. Not being enough, we also have a little city next to Chapel Bay, which is called Melbourne. Melbourne has over 400 technology companies. Those tech companies are actually started in Melbourne in 2009. The mayor of Melbourne at that time, really smart man, he had a big problem due to the recession at that time, and he created an opportunity for tech companies. He says, if you move your company to Melbourne, we're going to give you one to two years free rent. Guess what? 2020, and we have over 400 companies available, and we have several thousand jobs being created. So the Space Coast, due to geographic location, is pretty much the only place in the U.S. where you can put a man in the moon. That's right. Uh, due to the proximity of with the equator. So a little bit about the east, right on the Atlantic, moving a little bit towards Orlando. And that road is called the I-4 Corridor. I-4 Corridor connects the east all the way up to the west. In Deltona, we're going to be developing some plots and some apartments. We have a close to 2,000 units coming live in the next 36 months. Kids. That's how much we believe in Central Florida and the economy. That's how much construction you're bringing online, new builds. New builds, all new builds. Gene and I, we have created what we call a tenant resilient housing, which will tell you a little bit more about it. But we have a brand new hospital in front of this project in Deltona that we're building. Also, we have a brand new Amazon distribution center right on the corner. And for people that are very concerned about jobs, Amazon has recently announced nationwide they're opening up 100,000 new job vacancies. So it's simply amazing. Moving a little bit more west towards Orlando and Central Florida, we have Poinciana and Kissimmee area. Those areas are very close to Disney. They're about 25 to 30 minutes from Disney. You have brand new hospital, university, a lot of new employers, one of them being LG, the technology company from South Korea. They're building what they call the technology city. It's going to be 50 acres and $500 million dollars for a headquarters and development area in that area. Also, the city and the county has announced they're actually allocating several thousands acres to bring in new technology companies with the same appetite as LG. A lot of your tenants in that area are professionals that are working for public supermarkets, which is the largest supermarket headquarters here in Central Florida in the Southeast United States. Actually, funny fact is... Uh, during the corona crisis, they actually reached a record a couple of days ago. They sold $1 billion in one day in all of their stores nationwide. That's astounding. Another good thing about the geographically location of Poinciana, Kissimmee, and Poe County is this is the only area in the state where you can make day trips for North Florida and South Florida. So a lot of technology companies are there as well. Central location. Centrally located. The equipment, the trucks are a lot less expensive for those day trips. 
They go from uh, Lakeland and Polk County all the way to Miami and back in one day, all the way up to Jacksonville and back in one day. A lot of distribution companies, medical manufacturing facilities are there. Medical products distribution centers are located in that area as well. Moving a little bit north, we actually get to Ocala, Summerfield, and Bellevue. What do we have there? The Villages. The Villages is the largest retirement community in the world. We have amazing restaurants, Starbucks, all the big retailers are there. People, as Jean says, they drive their golf carts everywhere. They have a great quality of life, and that's a 55 and over community. Actually, it's a city now. They just acquired another 8,000 acres, and they're going to be building 46,000 new homes. Well, guess what? If you're not 55 and over, you can't live in the villages. So nurses, police officers, firefighters, people that serve that community cannot live at the villages because a lot of them cannot afford or they're not 55 and over. They need to serve the villages and provide them with services, but they can't live there. Yes, that's exactly it. So we saw an opportunity and we're building several new builds around that area to service those people that actually work at the villages. So those are the three main areas that we're servicing right now, Keith, as far as Central Florida is concerned. That's a pretty vast geography. Florida is one of those states where you can actually provide housing from coast to coast, from east to west. You have so many units under construction at any one time, and you also keep those under management all in-house as well. So when we think about building and the fact that you're continuing to build, and I know that you're continuing to build. I have not been in Florida lately, but you did send me a video where I do see that six feet of spacing between construction workers, and I see the hand sanitizer on site, and I know that you're still building. Building, but we think about building and we think about absorption and buyers and renters and the fact that we're still in a pandemic. Tell us about what was learned from the last downturn and what actions you're taking today with regard to that. Communication, communication, and communication with the tenants and the investors all the time. Keep them updated. We don't over leverage. Everything that we're building, we're building cash. So leverage is not a good thing in construction. We have seen a lot of our friends getting their construction loans pulled out of them right now uh, because banks are afraid. The market is afraid. The stock market is actually on a bear market right now. So everybody's afraid. So cash is king. We build out of cash. Uh, We don't over leverage. We're very conservative and we build good quality new homes because the demand actually it's much larger than the supply. So Tenants are not actually renting used properties. They're fading away from multifamily. We have a waiting list for a duplex that we're just delivering this week. People are actually moving into new single family homes in a quarter of an acre lot. Tenants love that. They don't want to press the same elevator button as as anybody else in that building. So we have seen evasion from people from multifamily into single family homes, especially new ones. That's right. It's more of a trend that where we're going toward low density housing amid the pandemic. People think about their interactions with other people differently. And that's what makes this crisis so much different than anything that we've had in the recent past. So you are continuing to build because you don't take out loans. That's very interesting. What about more with the market? Do you see yourself having to reduce prices or decrease rents? I see the exactly the opposite. I see rents going up. I see Mm -hmm. new inventory going up. I -hmm. see construction is actually not slowing down, but we're taking more precautions as far as the worker safety as well and their families. So we have less workers. What does that mean? Inventory is going to be at a premium. Not everybody's going to have inventory. You're not building as fast. We're not building as fast. Everything is working. We're building as, you know, but it's not business as usual. Building departments are closed. They will only talk to you if you have an appointment. We are getting built, we're getting seals, we're getting inspections, we're getting appraisals, but everything is taking a little longer than usual. Investors, if you have capital, if you have loans, now is the time to buy. And the reason why is I don't recall interest rates being as low as they are right now. Do you, Keith? No, never. It's amazing. I'm telling you right now, uh, Gene and I, were both investors as well, so I understand from the perspective. But not only renting those properties is a big, important point. The property management that we work with has over 1,200 properties under management. And last year, just want to give you some data, we only had out of 1,200 properties, seven evictions. That's a 99% eviction-free tenant base. 
So placement is key, not occupying the property with anybody but the right tenant. So even though the market is a little bit slower for everybody else, some of the fields that we work in, especially new homes, new construction is really doing well. Tenants are looking for single family homes, especially new homes, and we are qualifying those tenants. So the standards of tenants are not lowering, the price of rents are not coming down, and the price of properties are not dropping, at least in Central Florida. And then within the transaction, how about delays in closing, including delays with inspections or appraisals? Are those people still at work? They are still at work. Luckily enough for us, once again, new construction wins. I just spoke to an appraiser yesterday, and she's doing an appraisal for us tomorrow. She will come in on the property and conclude her appraisal because the property is non-occupied. So appraisers are very comfortable walking into new units that are non-occupied. A lot of the lenders are taking a little bit longer. We would probably say five to seven additional days to get all the loans prepped. And that's because a lot of the mobility, they're working from home. They don't have all the tools, bells and whistles as they do with the office. So it's taking a little longer for the underwriters to get everything completed. But we are closing as normal. We're doing mellowways. We're doing mobile notary. We're doing online notary right now, which the state of Florida has recently approved. We are utilizing all the tools available to us, but it is actually business as usual. We are closing homes, we're selling homes, we're building homes in Central Florida. But you have such a demand for new construction homes and such a demand for people moving into Florida. You're listening to Get Rich Education. We're talking with Gene Gillen and Wagner Nolasco about investing in Central Florida. More when we come back. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Property investors can get killed with maintenance costs. That's less likely when you buy brand new construction. Let me tell you about JWB Real Estate Capital in bustling Jacksonville, Florida. They pioneered the build to rent model where you can invest in new construction, turnkey rental property. That's why JWB was featured on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. To learn more and see inventory, start now at newconstructionturnkey.com. The company that's provided our listeners with more loans than anyone is Ridge Lending Group, NMLS 42056. You can finance more than 10 single families up to fourplexes. Serving most U.S. states, their knowledge and experience leads to your financial freedom. They're number one in the investment space. Pre-qualify and then chat with President Chaley Ridge personally. Start on your next investment property loan right now at RidgeLendingGroup.com. This is Rich Dad Advisor Ken McElroy. Listen to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold and don't quit your daydream. Welcome back to Get Rich Education. We're talking with Gene Gillen and Wagner in Alaska about Central Florida new construction investment property and We're having this conversation at such an interesting time because when we think back about crises, we think about the 2007 to 2009 global financial crisis, but this is so different. It's a crisis unlike any other. Tell us more about some of the adjustments that you've had to make to your business. Well, basically, at the beginning when this happened, we have a lot of houses being built and under contract. We only had a handful of people that got nervous and probably they're new investors But a savvy investor, somebody that's been doing this for a long time, is looking for that close. They want this house and they might want more. Why? Because of all of these wonderful things. You know, they say it's the great storm. Well, this is the great storm. Lower interest rates. Only investors will be buying for a little while. And people need a place to live because they can't buy. They don't have jobs. And so this is the perfect storm for an investor. So we work directly with builders. They build only for us. And they do not have to have a sales team. They don't have to have a management team. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to even have a house for people to look at because we do that ourselves. So they know when they come to us and they say, okay, I'm going to build you 50 houses this year. They just build 50 houses and we sell 50 houses. The houses are discounted to our buyers. And why do we discount them? We discount them because the builders are getting all of this done for them without all their inherent costs. 
So they give it to us less, and therefore we can give it to our investors for less. So like, for example, in Palm Bay, it's at least $20,000 that people are buying with equity. In Kissimmee, we're talking about ten to fifteen thousand dollars and that you can just go and see all the new builders and what they have and what the difference is and as wagner will tell you it's a tenant resilient house well you only work with a builder and a builder only works with you that way they don't have to have the sales and marketing costs that way the investor buys at a lower cost and consequently you often have appraisals that come in higher than your contract purchase price correct If I may add a little bit to what Gene says, uh, as a builder myself, and now more of a developer, and we have close to nine builders in our team right now, Kate, they build exclusively for us. They don't have a model house, so they save money on that. They don't have any sales team because we do all the job for them through the investors. They don't have 10 different colors of countertops and upgrades. Everything is already included. So Gene and I, when we started to really go after the new builds, We developed a product that it's called tenant resilient housing. What is that? We only build block construction, which in my personal and professional opinion is the best way to build. We have hip roofing, which is the best roofing for standing high winds and hurricanes. We do double pan glass for energy efficient, LED lighting, granite countertops, wood cabinets, ceiling fans, tile throughout the house. So you don't have to change that carpet every so often. And we really believe in building something that is really high, high quality. What does that mean? It means your property is going to last a long time. So if you're building this for yourself for cash flow appreciation and equity, which all of our houses have, this is something that you can think about actually succeeding all the way up to your children, to your grandchildren, your grand grandchildren, because a block construction is not going to go anywhere. An additional thing, uh, Kate, is we're able to save money to investors because the builders, they buy in what we call the economy of scale. They buy from multiple houses. And with the same model in mind, that actually makes a lot of sense for them to build for us exclusively because we can pre-sale a lot of the houses. A lot of the houses are pre-sold before they even break ground. So that for the builder and for a developer is a dream come true. For our, our investors, the dream is this a brand new house, less than $600 for insurance a year. Less than $600 for insurance per year. Whereas if you bought the same house in the same area and it was 20 years old, you'd be paying about $1,800 a year. What's the difference? It's billed up to 2020 code and that makes insurance a lot less. So there are a lot of built-in equity for our people. That's a great point. When you think about this time in the market and how real estate markets are so nuanced, you think about how this is a bad market for prospective owner occupants, especially those first-time home buyers and those people that are right on the brink of qualification. In the past few months, we've had this tightening in qualification standards. You need to have a higher FICO score. You need to show more assets or income. Well, those loan qualifications get more stringent for that prospective home buyer. Now they can't buy that home any longer. That moves those people into the rental pool and that increases rental demand. We have seen a lot of that, Keith, actually. We have seen people that had rented up the properties from our investors that wanted to actually save money either through stocks or actually uh, compensations to their employers. They now have decided to extend their leases. We have had a higher renewal rates. Our tenants to stay in our properties in between three to four years in average because it's a new property. And by being a new property, which is amazing, is you're actually the one that unwraps the, to- the, the toilet. You take the first shower, you, you cook the first meal in that house. You have a sense of ownership. <laughs> right. And that's amazing how tenants relate to that new property as their own home. And they will take care of it a lot better than a used property. So tenants that had a plan to buy, had a plan to move, they're extending their leases right now and staying with us, So, which is great new for us. But unfortunately, right now, they are not purchasing. We have seen a very large decrease in purchase by homeowners, first-time home buyers, so on and so forth. We build on what's called infill lots. So that means you'll go down the street and it looks like a regular community. The people are living there, all the houses are there, but there may be one or two lots on that street. That's the lots that we buy or we have our builders buy and build on. So you're not 
going to be living in a construction zone. That's really important. And the lots also are around one quarter acre, more or less. What does that mean? So if you go into a regular PUD, a planned community, done by D.R. Horton or any of those, they'll be on 40 or 50 foot lots. You've got eight to an acre instead of four to an acre. That's a big, big thing because here in Florida, people like their space. And I think space is going to become a very, very big catalyst for where people want to live. They want their space. They want their family to be safe. That's a great point. And my wife and I actually live on a quarter acre lot ourselves. So I know how that feels. And I would know how having a home in between each home here would feel if there were eight to an acre, it would feel substantially different and not nearly as wide open. And what's interesting is when you do new construction infill projects, not only are those people avoiding living in a noisy construction zone, those tenants in that new construction home, typically you will have older homes around them and those older homes already have equity in them. So like with what we saw happen in 2007 to 2009, when we saw neighborhoods take a dive and people would walk away from their homes, that's a lot less likely to happen when you have infill properties with homes in that neighborhood that have equity in them. You're absolutely correct. Not only that, we actually bring more equity to that neighborhood because new construction coming in raises the price per square foot. And, and the neighbors love us. Yeah. Our investors love us because they do have the best looking house in the neighborhood of the street. And that's a big thing. That's what renters are looking for. They're looking for the Wi-Fi garage door opener, which they can open from the cell phones, the granite countertops, the stainless steel appliances, the tile throughout the house. It's just, it's new, it's well built, it's uh, uh, LED throughout the house, so it's energy efficient, and we take a lot of pride in what we do, Pete. Give us an idea of the square footages of the homes and the prices that one can expect to pay. I know that's a little tricky to answer because you do go from the East Coast to the West Coast and you offer different product types, but give us an idea. So I'm going to start with Ocala, the Villages area, which we have two products. The average square footage there is between 1,077 square feet to about 1,400 square feet. Prices vary for a brand new house. You're not listing in it. This is the correct information. It starts at $139,900. $139, for a new build. For a brand new build, it's a 3-2 with a one-car garage. Block on a quarter of an acre. On a quarter of an acre lot. Then we go to the second model, which we call the Classic. The Classic is also a 3 two with a two-car garage, a little bit more square footage, close to 300 more square feet, and you are at 159.9. If you go towards Point Siena, Kissimmee area, greater Orlando, you're looking at about $210,000 for about 1,600 square feet. And if we move all the way down to Palm Bay, we have between about 1,750 to 1,800 square feet under air and two-car garage, and that's about between Two fifteen to two hundred twenty thousand dollars for a new build. Why do we have both prices? Is because we're building two areas of that city, southeast and northwest, which are the best neighborhoods. Lots in southeast is a little bit less expensive for us, so we pass on the savings to investors. And lots on the northwest are closer to retail, closer to uh, I ninety five, which is a major interstate, and that's two twenty to one hundred twenty thousand dollars for a house. These are some very attractive, approachable price points for new construction. Well, Gene or Wagner, do you have any last thoughts about brand new construction Florida investor homes today? The only thing I would like to leave to the investors, being an investor myself, is a brand new house is not going to need as much repairs as an old house does. And uh, being an investor, what I am doing and what I have done is I'm selling all my current inventory and I'm buying everything new. Why? My capital expenditure is a lot less you have a one-year bumper-to-bumper bumper on that house in the first year by the builder, which will guarantee it. The state of Florida mandatory makes us do a 10-year structural warranty on that property as well. And you're going to have lower insurance rates because everything is built up to the latest construction codes, which Florida has one of the most strict building construction codes in the country. We don't build in a flood zone as well. And your house, when necessary, will have double pan glass with hurricane-proof windows. So your tenants will have to put up shutters in case of a hurricane or a storm comes through. So we think about all the little details. So the investor doesn't have to spend any more money, not even a dollar, once they take possession of this property. This is tenant ready day one. Yeah, and I would like to also mention that the main people that are moving here 
right now, and there's some in between, but are baby boomers and millennials. And baby boomers, when they come from a, a northern state where it's, you know, older houses, they get here, all they want is what we call a Florida house. It's a four bedroom, two bath, you know, one story, you look out on the backyard and it's very nice. You go in through your garage with your garage door opener, you can turn your lights on from your phone. They really want that. They want new, they don't want old. The normal person wants to live in a great community. You have to go to niche.com, N-I-C-H-E.com, and it'll tell you what each little city is rated. And I always tell people, put your city in. Everybody thinks they live in an A place, and then they right. look on niche.com, and they go, oh, we have crime here? I didn't even know it. So the truth of the matter is it's rated very well. So a lot of our communities are. And, you know, people always have asked me for a very long time, can you do that 1% rule? With new construction, it's challenging to get that 1%. Yes. But even when you think of a $139,000 house and it's projected to get somewhere around eleven fifty dollars to $1,200, it's pretty close. And then when you, the 159000 is 1400 to 1450 Our savvy and older investors are calling every day, getting another one and another one. So you think about that cash on cash, it's a really, really good opportunity. Palm Bay is rated number nine in the country by niche.com for the best places to buy a house in the country. We also have a lot of built-in equity, cash flow, positive cash flow, and appreciation in those areas. We don't build in neighborhoods that have very high crime rates. We actually do the opposite. We look for infill lots in very established and great neighborhoods where we can build a house and have a great tenant coming and moving right into it. Well, Gene and Wagner, you operate with a very vibrant business with a lot of new construction. You have two super property managers that deal with your wide geography. One of them was a former NASA engineer. If you want to learn more about cash flow new construction property in Central Florida, I encourage you to go ahead and get the report that Gene and Wagner provided for you at GetRichEducation.com slash Orlando. Gene and Wagner, thanks so much for coming onto the show. Thank, Thank you, Keith, so, so much. much. I think one thing that sets Gene and Wagner apart is this volume that they do offers investors an astounding selection. So it's not just property type like single family versus duplex. It's what region do you prefer along the Space Coast or do you prefer proximity to, say, a large retailer? And also, what neighborhood type do you prefer? Since they do infills, you already know what the neighborhood character is going to be like. Or maybe you simply want the area with the highest return today. They help you identify the best properties with the highest yields. If you like, they can help you arrange a home inspection, home insurance, and even can help secure your financing if you choose to use it. A lot of this is path of progress investing here, spanning Greater Orlando and Central Florida. What you can do is take a look at area maps, property photographs, and cash flow sheets as well as get a profile of their property management. And all of that is in the report that was beautifully put together for you at GetRichEducation.com slash Orlando. We're talking about all new construction, single family homes, townhomes, and duplexes. That report will answer a lot of your preliminary thoughts. And that report also has the provider's preferred contact information so that you can follow up with them from there if you so choose. Take a look so that you can get involved at GetRichEducation.com slash Orlando. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold, and I'll be back next week to help you build your wealth. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.